Hey Google users, welcome back. This is Goldie and in this video I'll show you Google's newly launched functionality in Google Calendar that will help you create a beautiful looking booking page where your customers or vendors or any external party can book your time. So it might be helpful especially if you run a small business where instead of doing back and forth on phone you can just send the link to your customers or prospective customers and let them book your time seamlessly okay so first i'll show you my couple of slides so that you understand the basics behind it and then i will show you the step-by-step -step demonstration of how to set that up okay so this is the kind of page that you will end up creating it looks beautiful and your customers can then select uh, the windows or the slots that you make available for them now before i show you the demonstration couple of quick things you might have already used appointment slots functionality in google calendar in the past what differentiates this newly launched feature called appointment scheduling is that appointment slots are more geared toward internal use cases so maybe if you're a teacher or uh, and you want to give your students appointment slots so that they can come and book your time that's fine but what if you want to give the same functionality but to external parties like your prospective customers or existing customers for those external use cases appointment scheduling would be uh, perfect now before i show you the demonstration just a quick thing on logistics appointment scheduling feature is available in following editions so if you have google workspace till the time you're running business standard plus or enterprise standard plus you're all set uh, google workspace education there are ed additions listed which you must have in case if you need this functionality it is not available to certain uh, google workspace and uh, legacy G Suite business and basic uh, uh, customers. Also, very important in case if you are still using personal Gmail account, which ends up in at gmail.com, this is not available by default. However, you can consider upgrading to a new plan that's called Google Workspace Individual. I have a dedicated video, I'll link it somewhere. And once you upgrade, it's a paid plan, then you should be able to leverage this appointment scheduling feature. Okay, so with that, let me share my screen and show you how to set that up uh, step by step. Okay, so I'm in my Gmail, I'll click on this uh, app launcher and I will go to Google Calendar. Once I'm in Google Calendar, I'll click on create. Under the drop down, you will see this new feature called appointment schedule. Click on that. And once you click, let's give the title which your uh, customers will see when they try to book you. So I'll put Google Workspace Consultation, okay? Now you can choose the duration of this meeting. For me, if 30 minutes is fine, but in case if you need to like make it 15, 45, whatever, you can do that from here, okay? And then general availability means on which days and for which time slots you want your customers to be uh, book you. So Saturday, Sunday unavailable, uh, if I want, I can make them available, but I don't want to uh, do that. So for now, I'll say I'm available, let's say every day between 3 to 3.30, it's a 3.30, it's a 30 minute slot. In your case, you know, you can, if you're uh, into sales, you may, you know, make it a full day too. And then instead of doing it one by one from Monday to uh, Friday, I can just click on this one, which will copy that slot to all of the days. Or you can just, you know, uh, go to the specific day. So I'll click on copy time to all. Okay, now it, I'm available 3 to 3.30, Monday to Friday uh, for this. Okay, now let's talk about some other options available here. Scheduling window. Okay, which will limit the time range during which appointment slots can be booked. Okay, so you can either say that I'm available now, okay, or you can make it start and end date. Maybe you're running a sales campaign which will start from, let's say, uh, 1st of May and it will end on May 31st. You can only do these appointment schedule, uh, schedules available for that one specific month by mentioning start and end dates i want to make it available now and then you can also define the maximum time in advance that our appointment slots can be booked for example how in advance 
yeah, these people can book you. So 60 days is fine, but in case if you need to increase or decrease, you can certainly do that. If you just uncheck it, that means you're not defining it and it's like indefinite. Okay, so customers can book you, you know, maybe an year in advance. For me, I'll go with default 60. Now the minimum time before the appointment slot, appointment start that it can be booked. So if you do not want somebody to just, you know, come today at 2.30 and book appointment for 3, 3 p.m. in my case, you can mention, uh, you know, the, the kind of uh, time you need in advance to prepare for that. So if it's 12 hours for you, fine. If not, you know, you can increase or decrease it. If you uncheck it, then that means you're just opening it for every uh, everything. Okay. After that, you have adjusted availability, which says indicate times and specific dates when you are available, which is not my case. But if it's yours, you can go ahead and put those specific dates. In my case, it's like indefinite. Now, booking appointment settings. When I click on this drop down, you will see a few things. Number one, buffer time. That in my case, I just uh, provided 30 minute slot every day. So that might not make sense. But let's say if you're a salesperson or maybe if you're a consultant, you're offering consulting slots. And if you're offering, let's say, three hour slots every single day, maybe six slots, you want to have some buffer time in between those, those slots to avoid, you know, kind of back to back calls. And for that, you can define the buffer time so that nobody can book you. Uh, right after uh, one to another call. Similarly, you can also have maximum bookings per day. Let's say if you are making your calendar available Monday to Friday full day uh, or the whole day, then you can say 30 minutes, but maximum four calls can be scheduled every day. In my case, I'm just offering 30 minute slots. So I'll uncheck it. Okay, once you're done with these settings, you will click on next, and then you will do some settings specific to you how your booking page will look and which information pieces will it collect. So here, uh, by default, it's picking up my photograph and my name from my Google account profile. In case if you need to change it, you can click here and you should be able to change that. Okay, second thing is the location uh, of the meeting in case if you are offering the, uh, this meeting in your office or maybe in, in Starbucks somewhere, you can enter in-person meeting and then you can add the address uh, of that location. In case if it will be a phone call, you can select phone call uh, where the person who is booking you will put uh, his or her phone number so that you can call them. In case if you do not want to specify anything for now, you can select this one. In my case, I'll do the video consultation. So I'll select Google Meet video conferencing, which will add a video conference URL in the calendar. OK, now it's time to put some description under description. Obviously, you can format it. You can add attachments if you want. So I'll say uh, this and cost first consultation is and I'll just do bullet points here. Okay, you can add whatever you want. And then let's talk about the booking form itself, which uh, will be filled by the customer or whoever is booking you. Now, first name, last name and email address, they are like uh, non adjustable fields, you can't delete them, you can't change them as you see here. Uh, but the phone number, you can either remove it if you don't need it, or you can edit it to say whether it's required or optional. But what if you need more information from your customers based on the business that you run? In my case, let's say if I'm doing Google Workspace consultation, I need to check uh, whether the person who is booking me is uh, Google uh, super admin or not. I'm just making it up. I don't know. You, you, you get the idea, right? So I'll say, are you a Google uh, workspace super admin you can come up with your own questions based on your business and then you can make them required or optional I'll make it required so that they must answer it to book me and I'll click add item okay and you can't add any more item for now so be cautious uh, now let's talk about the booking confirmation and reminders so I'll click on that and here when they book you they will be sent an email reminder email will come to you too. And here you can check whether they should uh, keep getting reminders or, or not get reminder at all. In my case, 
I would say I should send, you know, I'll, I'll go for custom for the first one because I want uh, one email to be sent to them, let's say three days before the meeting coming up. And then one more, which, which should go them a day before. And the final one, which should go to them one hour before. Okay, I want that uh, these people to attend. And then I'll click on save. As soon as I do that, my appointment scheduling booking page is ready. As you see here, it says open booking page, or I can click here and I can copy the booking page URL. So I'm going to copy this. Now I will act as, as a customer who is booking it. Assume that I might have sent this person a booking page URL in my email signature, or I'll show you a bonus tip too in a minute. So I'll go to an incognito window as a customer. I click on this URL and this is where I'll be landing. And as you see, you have the photograph and your name here and uh, the meeting title. And this is what you put in the description, 30 minutes slot, Google Meet conference. So as you see, no more appointment scheduling options are available other than the one that I chose. So I'll go with, let's say Tuesday, 3 p.m. And this is the experience that your customers will get. So they will put their name, okay. Uh, and then I'm gonna put my email address here to show you what happens when they fill up the form, phone number. Okay, I'll do 888. Okay, are you a Google Workspace admin? This was our custom field. So I'll say yes, and I'll click on book. Okay, it says booking confirmed. Everything is all set. And uh, if I need to cancel, I can go and cancel it. I'll close it for now because my meeting is booked. I'll uh, now go to my email. And as you see, I got an email saying my Google uh, appointment slot or appointment scheduling is done. And it is booked by Mr. OKOK, OK, OK, who says uh, I'm the Google Workspace Super Admin. So this was your customer experience. And if I go to my Google Calendar now, I will also see that this is booked for Tuesday uh, 5th. When I click on that, it provides me all the details. Okay, I can cancel or you know send a message on this email if I need to convey something else. Okay, so now it's a time to share a bonus tip, I'm confident you will find it useful. So by default, you have this long URL that you will need to convey to your customers or whoever wants to book you. Of course, you can write a small text and add this link, which will work, uh, but we can make it better. And let me show you how. So in case if you have your own domain, so for example, I have my domain, which is called goldierora.com. And I want to customize my URLs. For example, I want to call it consult with goldie.goldierora.com. In your case, in case if you have multiple people working for your business, you may come with consult with Mark, consult with Jason, consult with Ram, Sham, or whatever, dot your domain.com, and then give this URL to these uh, people so that they can add that in their email signature. Or they can simply, you know, when they're meeting somebody, they need to convey it they can simply say, well, you can go to consult with goldie.goldiero.com and uh, feel free to schedule some time. Doing this is pretty easy. Step one, just copy the Google Calendar appointment booking page that you got from Google Calendar. Step two, log into your DNS, wherever you have your name servers pointed, okay? And then go to that place and create a new CNAME record. Whenever you create a CNAME in your DNS, it will ask you for two pieces of information. First, is the record host name. The host name will be whatever you're putting uh, before your domain name. So for me, it's, it's consult with Goldie. In case for you, if it's just book me or something, just put that here in the host name. In the value, you will be putting your uh, calendar booking page URL. Just save it. Uh, within a few minutes or a few hours, depending on uh, your DNS TTL or some technical stuff, just leave it for now. But within 24 hours, usually you will be uh, able to share this with your customers. Anybody can go to consult with goldier.goldier.com or whatever URL that you came up with, and they will land on that beautifully looking page to book you. I hope this might have been helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, 
do not hesitate to put that under this video and I'll be happy to collaborate. With that, thank you so much.